Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about organization, how you structure your fuse base for your internal and external collaboration, pure emissions, pricing, and templates. Before we get to the details, I actually want to start with a recap so you know what to expect next. This is your organization, fuse base account. Then you have a dashboard that aggregate data from all of your workspaces. You can have as many workspaces as they need. Every workspace is a container that has internal space. It always has internal space. And optionally, you can have a portal for your internal or external collaboration. This is an example of the workspace. On the left, you have internal space and the portal space. Internal space is similar to Notion, Google Docs, Microsoft Loop, etc. Portals look like a micro website. They can be fully white label and highly customizable. Why do you need a portal? The only one thing that all people know how to use, and there is no learning curve, it's actually a mitigation on, our, on a website. That's why our portals look like a micro websites. And at the same time, they are very functional. You can create a tasks. You can let your clients or partners to edit those tasks and create the new stuff. So Fuse-based portals are very functional and super user-friendly. And what makes Fuse-based unique is ability to create AI agents in one place and use them in your internal collaboration, external collaboration, and even outside Fusebase in your browser. But that's another story that we're gonna cover in, in next videos. Your goal is to create a template portal or multiple template portals that you can reuse and instantly invite all of your plans. When you create a new portal, you can manually duplicate it. It takes less than a minute. Or you can use our automation module to trigger automation, even from your CRM. So there are two types of permissions, internal team members and external users. You have managers that have access to all of the workspaces. You have members that have access only to specific workspaces, and internal space or internal and external. And also, you have a clients that's your external users which you can invite into individual portals or subfolders. Our pricing is very straightforward. We charge for internal team member or the portal. Whatever number is higher, we will charge only for, the, for that number. For example, in this example, we will charge you only for 20 portals. We don't charge you for client account. So you can have as many individual emails in your portal as you need. So it's a pretty flexible and you need to understand how it can be applied for your unique use case. On this webinar, we will cover the structure, how to invite clients and internal team members, the pricing, how we price you, and types of the accounts. Now, we have the workspaces. Think about workspaces as a container that contains your internal space and a portal. Some of workspaces can have just internal space. When you create a workspace, by default, it always has internal space. Here's an example. This is internal space. Here we go. And you can create a, a portal which can be used for your internal team or your external collaboration. So internal team, for example, your HR portal, sales portal, and onboarding portal. External portals usually created for deal rooms, client portals, partner portals, etc. So the difference is what kind of people you invite in, in those portals. So if you invite your, your team members from your organization, you can consider those portals as internal. If you invite someone outside your organization, you can consider those portals as external. So in my example here, uh, I have a workspace type column and I can select what kind of portal is this, external or internal. So it kind of helps me to navigate to the right uh, portals based on my current situation. This is an example of your dashboard. You can get there clicking on this home button and you have a different views 
workspaces, portals, clients, uh, we're gonna have forms and more views, and you can create your columns. If you click edit, and you can create eight new fields, or you can create your custom views. And this is example of one of the portals you, that you can create and can be used for your internal team or your external collaboration. You can invite your clients into every workspace and assign a portal per client or partner, or you can have one portal and invite them into subfolders with granular permissions. If you want to invite clients to the whole portal, you go to a dashboard, go to portals, and click invite button. If you want to invite your client to a specific folder, you go to the actual portal, click on those three buttons, I'm sorry, three dots, and you're gonna click on the manage access. In this case, you can invite different clients into different folders and they will not know about each other. And at the same time, you can have uh, folders that are available for everyone. And important remark, the phone page, the main page, always available to everyone. So you can set granular permissions only to the folder level. And I click on manage access, I'm gonna get to the list of all existing users that have access to this folder. And if I click invite, I have option to invite a new people, in my case, the role as a client, or select from existing members of my organization. And in a drop down, you can change the roles, which I will explain later on. And when you invite clients to the whole workspace or portal, here's how it works. It's important to make sure you selected the right workspace. And every workspace has internal area. This is internal area. And that's the address of your portal. So if you want to invite a client to the portal, you need to select role client and then select the portal. As you see, when I change the role, it automatically switched to the portal. Now, what's the difference between the roles? We can disregard the guest role because it will be depreciated. So we have a manager, member, and a client. Managers have access to the all workspaces, and they can manage them. Members, that's also your internal team members and can have access to specific workspaces. So managers can set members and can set which workspaces they have access to. Clients, that's your external users, clients, partners, vendors, etc., and they have access only to the portal. So members and managers have access to the workspace and to the portal, and clients have access only to the portal. Let me recap again. Managers have access to all workspaces internal spaces and the portals. Members, they can have access only to specific workspaces. In my case, there's only workspace three, and it has access to internal space and the portal. And finally, client, they have access only to the portal. So in my case, workspace one and workspace three, they have only portals and I invited that client into both of them. If needed, I can invite client only to one portal. Also, you will have a groups which you can group your members and invite them to different places. You go here on the left, then you get to the groups and you create a group. Let's talk about templates. You don't need to create a new portal or every folder and copy all of the contents every time for a new client. Once you have a new template portal, or you can have a multiple of those portals, you will be able to deploy them fast, less than a minute. The better structure is to use one portal per client, because our dashboards and some of the agents are built for that. You still can use a template folder and duplicate that, but this structure is more scalable and more beneficial. Once you create a template portal, you can instantly create new portals for your clients from the template. There are two ways how you can do that. Number one is when you create a new portal, you have the option to duplicate current portal, which means you can select your template portal and it will be instantly created. If you want to create the empty portal, you can also do that. 
The second option is to go to our automation module, which is similar to Zapier. You can create a trigger, for example, to trigger a new portal deployment from the CRM. What's going to happen is our automation will create a new portal, will copy all the contents from the template portal, and will send invitation for your clients. So when inside your CRM you change the status, you can automatically deploy the full portal and invite the client. These automations also work for the folders, which means you can create a folder, copy the contents of the template folder, and initiate invitation to one of your clients. But as I mentioned, using the way of one portal where one client is more beneficial because of the dashboards and some of the AI agents. Sometimes our clients ask, okay, if we will use a portal per client, how can we have the same content in the multiple portals? So we have a solution for that and it's very easy. When you create a new folder inside portal, you can select linked folder. Then you select your template portal and then you select one of those folders that you want to link. What's going to happen is that's going to act as single source of truth, which means whenever you put any content in the folder, in the template portal, it will be instantly appear in all of the portals. So in this case, you still keep the very great structure for dashboards and AI agents, and also you have individual content for every client and also linked content from the single source of truth, which you can distribute instantly. How external members can get inside the portal? So there are multiple ways how you can manage your portal access. You can ask for email without email validation, which means they will need to put their email and they will get inside. If you enable email validation, they're gonna get a code that they will need to put in the form before they get inside of the portal. Our system will save the session, so next time they will not need to enter the code. If you select open access, it means anyone with this link can get inside the portal. Consider that as a public portal. And finally, restricted action is the way where you invite clients by their emails and they can get inside the portal by themselves. For restricted access, we have a multiple ways how clients can get inside of the portals. By default, we send a magic link, they click on it and they get inside the portal. No login and password is required. Second option is a magic link plus code. When they click on a link, we will send the code to their email which which they need to copy and paste. Once they paste the code, we save the session so next time they don't need to put this code again. And the third option is login and password after which we will send a code and it will work the same way as a magic link plus code. For that, we need to go to a dashboard and click to manage workspace. And every workspace has a special setting where you can configure that. Additionally, you can have a universal portal link to allow all your external members to access your portal from one place. You need to go to the organization and get this link. You can put it on your website or any other place and our system will automatically send your clients to the right portal once they put their email. Our pricing works in a very straightforward way. We whether charge you by internal team member, which is member or manager, or we will charge you by portal. For example, if you have a 10 internal team members and 20 portals, you will pay only for portals. If you have 20 internal team members and 10 portals, you will pay only for internal team members. We will not charge you for client account. So what's the difference between portal and a client account? The portal is dedicated to a company or it can be dedicated to individual. Client account, this is individual email. So for example, we have this company name and you can have 300 individuals from this company in this portal. So we will not charge you for that. We will charge you whether for portal or for internal team member.